Hello and welcome to my Soma tutorial. In this tutorial, I am going to show you how to set up the modding environment. First of all, let's take a look at Soma's main folder. I'm using the Steam version, but if you're using the GeoG version, your directory paths will be different. You can see that in the folder you have multiple executables for editors. You will be mostly using the level editor, model editor and voice handler, but if you want to add custom assets, you will also be using the other ones regularly. You also have a workshop mod uploader for the Steam version. There are also some patch files that are used to run Soma in developer mode. You will need to use them to debug and test the maps you create. Then there's the mods folder, in which we will be storing all mod-related data. The Steam Workshop downloads mods in another directory under Steam, which is handled separately by the game, but for modding, we'll have to use this one. I recommend adding Soma's main folder, the HPL3 folder in my documents, and the Soma Workshop content folder from Steam to quickly access them in the Explorer. Some versions of Soma ship with older versions of the editors. Those versions have bugs and missing features. I recommend downloading the following version of the level editor from the wiki. The link will be available in the description. Once you have it, you can replace the already existing one. You should also check to see if your Steam app ID.txt file is present in Soma. If you want to use a darker reskin for the editors, there is a link in the description for the one that I use. There also is a bug you can fix with the material editor. Try running it once if you haven't already done that and then close it. Now go to your My Documents HPL3 folder and open the material editor.cfg in a text editor. And change the second value from the screen size to 700. Now you should be able to use more features in the material editor. For Soma modding, you will also want to have a scripting environment. There already are tutorials on setting them up, so I will add links for them in the description. I prefer using CodeLight over Visual Studio Code, but the tutorial for setting that up is slightly outdated. Some settings will be in different places than the ones mentioned in the tutorial because of the version differences, but it should be easy to figure things out. I highly recommend using either CodeLight or Visual Studio Code because code completion will make scripting a lot easier. Now that we have the basic environment for Soma set up, let's create a new mod entry. We need to navigate to the Mods folder and make a new folder for our mod. I will assume this will be a custom story, not an add-on pack. Firstly, we need to create the entry.hpc file. This is how it is supposed to look like. We are interested in the values set in the content category. Version is used to determine the current version of the mod. As a convention, 1.0 should be the release value. Type is a string that can be either standalone or add-on to determine the type of mod you will create. Title, author and description are strings that will be displayed in the workshop and mod launcher. UID is a unique ID that you can give to the mod. This is only required if other mods need to know if this mod is installed. Dependencies is a list of UIDs that are separated by commas, which tell the game that the respective mods need to be downloaded for this mod to be able to run. This is also used to make the current mod use assets that are present in the mods that it depends on. Add-ons have two specific values, language folder and resources CFG, which are needed if you need to specify the location of the lang files or the resources.cfg file which is by default in the root mod folder. Standalone mods have two other specific values that can be set. Launcher pick represents the file name or path for the image that will be used for the mod in the mod launcher. Currently this only works for workshop mods. Init CFG determines the path 
towards the main init CFG file that's essential for the mod. Now we need to create a resources.cfg file. The resources.cfg file is used to specify in which subfolders from the mods folder the game will look in for assets. It is generally a good idea to list all subfolders from your mod directory. This is how a default version of this file should look like. Conventionally, the main init cfg file is stored in the config folder. Let's create the config folder. This is a short version of the file that I used, but additional settings can be added here. In directories, we can specify a save folder for the mod. It should be specific to the mod you are making. In variables, you can change the name of the executable when it is running. In start map, you can change the file name of the starting map, the folder it's found in, and the name of the player's start area where the player will spawn at. If you're going to have custom assets and maps in your mods, you probably won't want to mix them with Soma's default assets. Luckily, you can store them in your mod folder and other mods listed in dependencies. Without doing anything, the level editor and the game won't know to look in your mods folder, unless you use the mod launcher. Let's go into the HPL3 My Documents folder and create a new text file named wipmod.cfg. This is what the file should look like. Here we must declare the patch for the mods entry.hpc file. And by having this file, the level editor should start looking for files in your mod. Now, if we want the editor to also look for assets in the mod that aren't coming from dependencies, we have to go back to the mods folder and create a folder called Editor. Inside it, we need to create a file named lookupdears.cfg. Here's what the file should look like. Here we can specify different directory categories and then their paths from the root folder. The ones you'll probably use are static objects, entities and probably detail meshes since those paths are used directly by the editor. But you can also include others like particles or billboards. It is important for the directories to actually exist. If they don't, you will receive some errors when you start up the level editor and that can get annoying. So let's create those folders. Now all the editors should use custom assets you included in your mod and its dependencies. You can check to see if this is working in the editor. If it is working, you will notice that it will be saying working on mod on the top of the editor. Now that the editors are working properly and can see all your assets, we should set up a dev mode version of Soma to test the mod. To do so, simply copy the somadev.bat file and rename it to something specific for your mod. Now edit it with a text editor. I will explain what each of these arguments and commands means. The first file name or path can be either soma.exe or somanosteam.exe. I prefer to use the no Steam version because the Steam version occasionally prompts Steam to give a notification and ask if you want to continue with running the game with those settings. The file path after the mod argument should lead to the mod's entry.hpc file. The file path after the map argument should lead to the map that you wish to load when starting this batch file. It can also lead to a non-existing map, in that case you can press F1 and load another map. The value after user should be dev and the file path after CFG should lead to Soma's default developer mode CFG file. Be sure to have this all in one line. And now we can test the batch file. We can see that the map doesn't exist and it doesn't load the map, you can press F1 to load any map. By running this batch file and starting Soma in dev mode, you will have access to all of the assets from your mods and its dependencies. 
This should be all the basic setup you need in order to cleanly organize your Soma installed version for modding. I hope this helps and can't wait to see what content you will create. Thanks for watching.